Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Greg Andrews from Search Minerals. How are you today, Greg? I'm great, Tracy. Thank you. We are delighted to have you in this interview. If, if just for starters, as a rare earths expert, if you can tell us a little bit more about what happened last week in the market, can you comment on this, please, Greg? Uh, absolutely. Um, in the market last week, we had, you know, just more media and press about the uh, ever-growing trade relationships between U.S. and China and the fact that China has the dominated that space and, and what levers that they may be able to use rarers in a trade war with, with the U.S. And that, that got a lot of people interested, again, in the sector, which is, which is very good news for, for search minerals. And of course, we both know that these issues of sustainability and these critical materials are not going away. And just because the market goes up or goes down or it's finally brought to the attention, I think people out there should know that Search Minerals is a North American source of rare earths. So why don't we start there and let's talk about your most recent news release. Let me congratulate you here. You just acknowledged uh, junior exploration assistance from government of Newfoundland and Labrador. Can you talk to us about this, please? Uh, absolutely. So Search Minerals operates in Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador. We have great government support with the Newfoundland and Labrador government. So that grant was provided to, you know, junior explorers like ourselves that are continuing to develop the area. As a result of some of these work programs, we our most recent uh, development was the Deep Fox drill program, which was very successful that we're following up on to continue with being able to supply those rare earths demands that we expect in the future here. And of course, for those of you out there that may be new to rare earths, can you tell us a little bit, Greg, about what your focus is with the rare earths? Yeah, Search Minerals, we're, we're blessed with our deposit in that it contains both the light rare earths that are used in the permanent magnet market, neodymium, praseodymium, and the heavies dysposium. And it's a nice mixture and concentration of each of those that's going to support the permanent magnet market. It can, those, those elements of the permanent magnets compose 85% of our revenue, and that's what we're really focused on is that permanent magnet industry. And Greg, of course, you're you're a, a a professionally respected and internationally renowned rare earths expert. Can you tell some of the people out there that are new to the rare earths industry just a little bit more about Search Minerals because you've been doing this for some time? Yeah, Search Minerals got into the rare earth business back in 2010, 11, when the prices last time spiked because of the rare earth crisis involving Japan and China. And at that point, we were one of, I don't know, four to 500 other companies that uh, entered that market. Um, as a result, we were able to raise money and, how it, and also discover our rare earth district, which is 70 kilometers long by eight kilometers, which we have one resource and we just are hoping to add a second resource. So we were able to continue that work based on that last crisis. And we've continued to work throughout until where we are here today. And of course, many of you out there are probably aware of the fact that getting this kind of level of government support is obviously a nod of respect not only to your project, but the issues of sustainability in North America. Is that correct? Or can you tell us what some of their reasonings and rationale were for getting so firmly behind Search Minerals? A few things. Uh, number one, it is a great resource in North America and Canada in particular, North Newfoundland and Labrador in particular. Um, and they've been able, both federal and provincial have given us the support that we've been able to continue with the demonstration plant during the times of the most depressed rare earth market going on in the last few years. So that's just enabled us to continue and get a step up as opposed to waiting for the next cycle and start restarting developmental work and demonstration work at that time. So we're very blessed that they've continued to support us in good and in bad times to continue with our business thesis of where we're headed. Okay, and you know, I know that a lot of people that are new to rare earths uh, or people who are revisiting the rare earth market do appreciate that it's not as traditional as the normal resource market. There's a lot of technology involved in the extraction processes. Can you talk to this a little? Talk to us a little bit about this, please, Greg. Sure. Um, again, we, uh, with government support, we were able to do the pilot plant uh, operation in 2016 to prove that we could actually take out the, um, create a concentrate which the market needs. 
uh, for further processing. Uh, we're currently operating an $800,000 optimization program on that to continue to advance so that our, you know, we've already created a 99% pure mixed rare earth concentrate that is available for the next step uh, to complete our business plan. Well, Greg, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy.